the Purchase Order module can automatically generate purchase orders from posted requisitions, low stock quantities found within inventory control, and backordered items on sales orders within order entry. After these purchase orders are created, they can be modified using the standard purchase order entry icon. It's important to note that after a purchase order is generated from backordered items in order entry, those backordered items are flagged as being ordered and cannot be generated again if the purchase order or a specific purchase order detail line is subsequently removed. So be careful editing generated purchase orders. There are several periodic functions within purchase orders of which some are optional. Purchase orders can be generated automatically based on specific criteria to eliminate manual entries. Purchase order and statistical information can be viewed at any time, assuming the information is being tracked and that it has not been cleared. Optionally clear selected information such as transaction history, purchase history, or purchase statistics. Even clear printed posting journals so they are not printed again in the future. And of course the payables audit list can be cleared at any time after reconciling the payables clearing account using the provided report. Purchase orders also provides an option in the periodic processing section to update purchase order transactions in accounts payable and general ledger if they were not being updated directly when posted. Let's take a look at the purchase order periodic processing functions, beginning with automatically generating purchase orders. Purchase orders can be generated automatically from three areas, from posted requisitions, low stock levels in inventory control, and from backordered items listed on sales orders in order entry. Let's begin with posted requisitions. If multiple requisitions exist where purchase orders need to be created, enter the requisitions to be generated using either the requisition number range, the date range that the requisitions were created, or the vendor number range identified on the requisitions. To consolidate all detail lines from a range of selected requisitions where the same vendor, item, line of measure, location, or expected arrival date is the same, Select this option. Consolidation does not occur if the drop ship option is selected for an item on a requisition, even if multiple identical lines are going to the same location. In addition, this option is not available if optional fields are defined. This is because different detail lines may have different values defined for optional fields and cannot be consolidated. Select the Include Blank Vendors option if requisition details added with a blank vendor number are to be created using the corresponding vendor for the item identified in this next field. For example, assume item A has two vendors assigned within the Vendor Details section of Inventory Control. Vendor 1 for item A is identified as 1200, and Vendor 2 for item A is identified as 1400. If Vendor 1 is selected in the Using IC Vendor Type field, Item A is ordered from Vendor 1200. If Vendor 2 is selected, Item A is ordered from Vendor 1400. Those items that do not have a corresponding vendor number entered are not ordered. If the Optional Fields module is installed, the Optional Fields page is where Purchase Order Header Optional Fields are assigned. The Detail Optional Fields page is where optional fields are defined for each individual item detail that the requisition function creates. Optional fields are discussed in the Sage Backpack Optional Fields course. The Process button generates the purchase orders using the selected criteria. The purchase orders created can be reviewed before printing using the standard purchase order entry icon. The Create POs from IC icon is used to create purchase orders automatically from items that are low in stock. The Run Date field is the date ACPAC assigns the purchase orders that this function creates. 
This is also the date the system uses to determine the period for which to order the items specified in the reorder quantities field in inventory control. For example, if item A has a reorder quantity of 100 between January 1st and March 1st, a run date of February looks at the current item quantity level and the 100 reorder point to determine if any items need to be reordered. Next, select the vendor number range for which to create purchase orders, and then the item number range for which purchase orders determines the items to be created. The reorder quantities for field indicates the location or all locations the system reviews to determine if items need to be reordered. If specific location is selected, enter the location range to observe. Select the vendors to query in the lower left section of the window. For example, selecting vendor 1 and 2 calls purchase orders to determine the items to order by their vendor type. Items in the range specified are selected if the vendor number specified is one of the selected vendors in the Vendor Details section of Inventory Control. Then indicate what items to order in the Reorder section. All items orders all selected items that are below their maximum quantities in Inventory Control. Items below minimum orders selected items if their on-hand quantities are below the minimum quantities entered for them in the Reorder Quantities icon in Inventory Control. And items below Projected Sales for orders items if on-hand quantities are below the period's projected sales for the number of days entered in the next field. The actual quantity ordered depends on the quantity entered in the reorder quantity field for the item and the selections made in the next section. Regardless, the quantity ordered is always a factor of the quantity entered in the reorder quantity field. And finally, indicate the quantity to order in the reorder quantity section. Up to maximum indicates to order the quantity of the selected items up to or close to but not over the maximum amount specified in the reorder quantities icon in inventory control. Above maximum indicates to order the item quantity for the selected items for at least the maximum amount specified for the item in the reorder quantities icon in inventory control. The above maximum option can result in quantities that are higher than the maximum amount. Up to projected sales for X days indicates to order item quantities that bring each item's quantity on hand up to or close to, but not over, the projected sales quantity defined with the item for the number of days specified. And finally, above projected sales for X days indicates to order the item quantity that increases the quantity on hand for each item at least up to and possibly more than the quantity defined with the item for the number of days specified based on the run date. The process button generates the purchase orders using the selected criteria. The purchase orders created can be reviewed before printing them using the standard purchase order entry icon. The Create POs from OE icon is used to create purchase orders automatically from items found on posted sales orders where there is insufficient stock. There are several options to determine which sales orders are used to generate purchase orders. The first is to enter or select the range of customers that have existing sales orders for which items exist requiring purchase orders to be generated. Alternatively, the search can be done by entering a range of sales orders defined in order entry, or by searching by a range of order dates, and finally, by the expected ship date of the sales order. Next, select the vendor type to identify the items for which purchase orders are to be created. The system creates purchase orders only for items that have the selected vendor type, vendor 1 through vendor 9, assigned. For example, if item A has vendor 1200 assigned as vendor 1 and vendor 1500 assigned as vendor 2, a purchase order for vendor 1200 is created if vendor 1 is selected in the vendor type field. Vendor 1500 is used if vendor 2 is selected. 
It should be noted that if voter 3 through 9 is selected and item A did not have a vendor assigned to vendor 3 through 9, item A would not appear on the purchase order. Because of this, use vendor 1 as your primary vendor and work down from there. Then select how ACPAC should create purchase orders. Select Vendor if a single purchase order is to be created for each vendor for all items where the vendor number matches an item that needs reordering. For example, if items A, D, and R are assigned to be ordered from vendor 1200, a single purchase order for vendor 1200 is created showing items A, D, and R. Or you can select to create purchase orders by sales order. This option creates a separate purchase order for each sales order requiring items, which populates the sales order field on the purchase order. Therefore, when items are received, the shippable back order report can be printed showing which sales order to fill. This option potentially generates multiple purchase orders for the same vendor. For example, if items A, D, and R are from different sales orders, but vendor 1200 is the selected vendor for all three items, three separate purchase orders get generated using the order option. Next, determine which items and item quantities to order in the include section. All items indicates to order sufficient quantity to fill the sales orders regardless of the current item stock level. Items with insufficient quantities indicates to order only those items for which there are not enough units in stock to fill the selected sales orders. Where items on back order indicates to only order the number of units of each item for which a back order quantity exists. If the same item exists on multiple sales orders, the system automatically tracks the quantities from each so enough items are ordered. The Drop Ship Items option populates the Drop Ship address on the purchase order with the customer's address, rather than the items arriving on a receiving dock. This option may result in multiple purchase orders being created for the same vendor because the same item may exist on more than one sales order. The Consolidate Items option consolidates item details on the purchase order for the same item if the same location and unit of measure are defined on the sales order. For example, if item A exists on two different sales orders, both identified as being shipped from location 1 and both being sold as each is, a single detail line on the purchase order is created with the quantities combined. Consolidation cannot occur if the drop ship icon is selected or if optional fields are defined for purchase order creation. The Include Non-Stock Items option generates a purchase order for items on sales orders that are flagged as non-stock in inventory control. Non-stock items are items that exist in inventory but are not normally stocked, such as special order items or kit items. The Process button generates the purchase orders using the selected criteria. The purchase orders created can be reviewed before printing them using the standard purchase order entry icon. Within the periodic processing section, two icons exist. The first icon is to create one or both of two batches. The journal entries generated from entering purchase order transactions for general ledger and the invoice, credit, and debit note transactions for vendors and accounts payable. Depending on the integration settings discussed when setting up inventory control and purchase orders, the general ledger and accounts payable information may or may not already be updated. For the general ledger side, if within the general integration icon, the Create General Transactions option is set to On Request using Create Batch icon, then the first option needs to be selected to create the journal entry batch for the accounts in general ledger. Otherwise, the journal entries have already reached general ledger, either by performing day and processing or directly during posting. For the accounts payable side, if within PO options, the post AP batches option is set to on request using the create batch icon, then this second option needs to be selected to create that invoice batch for the vendors and accounts payable. Otherwise, 
the invoices have already reached accounts payable, either by performing day and processing or directly during posting. The clear history icon allows the ability to clear one of five areas, although all of the clear functions need to be performed. The first is transaction history. Assuming transaction history was being saved, selecting this option through the date specified removes the ability to view completed transactions on the transaction list report and the ability to drill into purchase order documents from within purchase orders, accounts payable, or general ledger. It's true that retaining transaction history does utilize significant disk space. However, the benefits are worth retaining the data for as long as possible. Once cleared, it's irreversible. The Purchasing History option removes information about the items that have been purchased and who they were purchased from, assuming purchase history was being saved. It also clears information about the invoices, receipts, returns, debit and credit notes that have been posted relating to those documents. To clear purchase history, select the year and period to clear up through. Also select to clear based on a vendor or item number range. Removing history is irreversible, and thus the purchase history inquiry window and report are affected. The purchase statistics option removes the high-level details about purchase order transactions up through the year and period specified, assuming statistics were being kept. Again, removing statistics is irreversible, and thus the purchase statistics inquiry window and report are affected. The Printed Posting Journals option removes those posting journal types that are selected through the day and number indicated. Posting journals are the audit trail documents that can be referred to in the event transaction information needs to be tracked later. Although the system only removes those posting journals that have been printed through the day and range specified, make sure you have the actual printouts of all posting journals before clearing. The Payables Clearing Audit option removes the ability to print the Payables Clearing Audit Report for any period that is cleared, up through the period and year specified. Before clearing, be sure to print the audit report to see if any transactions are still appearing in the Payables Clearing account. Optionally select to clear the information by account set code. When ready, click the Process button to clear the selected functions. Let's take a look at purchase order statistics and inquiries.